World Series champions. Touch them all, Joe. You'll never hit a bigger home run in your life. Canada is the second largest land mass, the first nation of hockey, and the best part of North America. My name is Joe, and I am Canada. everybody welcome to northern revolutions i'm rob welcome to i guess what i'm calling episode three of canadians talking about canadian music this was actually one long episode that i recorded with the boys and uh i had to split it up because it would have been about an hour and a half so uh, if you missed episode two i'll leave a link for that in the description uh if you're back for the conclusion hope you enjoy it i'm gonna get current on you guys now i moved uh -oh. into the 70s <laughs> uh, <current. laughs> this man put out i think one of the greatest canadian songs ever make me do anything you want oh uh, <laughs> another band that uh grew up in my hood that's uh paul Molman, the guitar player was a great guitar player he used to come and go to our little uh, drop-in centers on sunday nights and come and play for us and stuff it was great but uh these guys are great this this album is a comp which was released on uh, Record Store Day maybe a year or two ago. It's excellent. It's got Make Me Do Anything You Want and, uh, and uh, uh, Isn't Life Unkind in My Life, which is a great song of theirs too. And also, uh, um, what's her other hit? Uh, Love Is Coming. What was the other song that's kind of, there were the three big, big tracks off of this, but uh, I mean, they were just a great band. And they were kind of played, you know, it was it wasn't really heavy music. It was it was really guitar based and everything, but a lot of ballads and stuff like that. And but uh great band, great musicians. Aha the radius people. <laughs> yeah, I got it got a couple albums of theirs too. Yeah. <clears throat> Brian. Yeah. Oh all right. So I'm gonna go back to the late 70s because there's a band I think we have to talk about, uh, sometimes known as the Canadian Ramones, which which may be accurate, and that's Teenage Head. And I wanted to mention oh. them because, oh. first of all, I think they should have been bigger than they actually were, and there's mm -hmm. a, maybe a few reasons why that never happened. But we always think of Canadians as being very nice and polite, but this band was at the center of two riots. So the first in 1978, after the last Pogo concert at the Horseshoe, and then in 1980, at Ontario Place, I think more people showed up than could fit into the venue, and there was a riot there. So very interesting. And then tragedy, because as they were about to embark on their major U.S. tour, the first tour, there was a car accident, and Gord Lewis, the guitarist, was injured, and Frankie Venom, the, the singer, uh, died of throat cancer in 2008. And then just two years ago, Gord Lewis was murdered by his son. Yeah. So it's a crazy story, but the band ah. still persists. They've got a different singer for years now, and... Uh, I saw them in concert. Uh, well, I guess it was '81 or something. But I think they're really good. It's I, I hesitate to call them punk, more sort of punk. Like they are definitely have punk elements, and okay. I see the comparison to the Ramones. But they're more like maybe rock. And their their second yeah. record, Frantic City, has a lot of keyboards in it too. But Top Down is on here. Picture my face. This is a really cool album, and and so is Frantic City. I think they they were kind of shortchanged in a lot of ways. I think they should have been bigger. These records are probably. I don't know if you can find these or not, but I don't really look anymore. But I think this is a band that never got its due. And I think even today, I think people would find something in this music that they like. I think really Fantastic. honest rock music. So, And uh, there's a documentary made about, about how many years ago now? Three, four years ago? Exactly. Yeah. And uh, it's an amazing documentary. Some of it very sad because it kind of chronicles Gord Lewis's battle with depression and um, amazing, amazing documentary. I can't remember what it's yeah. called. It's not called Teenage Head, but. I can't you remember. Might even be watch watch it. You might even be able to watch it free on YouTube or something. I wouldn't be surprised, but well yeah. worth watching. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Great I was point. actually just checking out Teenage Head uh, a few months ago because I kept hearing about them like for decades. And finally, I yeah. thought, well, let me check out to hear what they sound like. But uh, I think I need that one song that's the landing place for me where after that, everything else makes sense. So far, I'm still kind of like hovering around trying to find where to land exactly. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, find it. I feel like it's a band I should probably get into, but uh, 
Yeah. Sometimes it's like that. You hear two or three songs and you're like, eh, and then you hear that one and it's just, okay, I'm in. The documentary is called Picture My Face, The Story of Teenage Head. Okay, Fantastic. gosh, I want to watch that then. Picture yeah, My yeah, Face. It's good. Right. It was done on it was done on TVO, so you can probably find it online. All right. Yeah. Yeah, documentary is often the way to go for me because I get really interested in the story of the band and then I want to know what they what they did. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, Peter, what do you got for us? Yeah, well, I guess talking about uh, bands whose stories got me into them. This is the latest release by Kitty from London, Ontario. <laughs> so Kitty... <laughs> Never heard of them. Kitty were, uh, they are, all-female metal band, mm. formed in the uh, mid-90s as teenagers. As a summer project, they recorded an album, printed 6,000 copies they sold in a week, and uh, then their label got bought out by another label. The album got reissued, and they sold 600,000 copies in the States. Now, this was just around the time wow. of this whole new metal scene, so they kind of got lumped in with that, and they went on tour in Europe with Slipknot, played Ozfest, and they just became huge. But they struggled on over the years. They, they went through different members and uh, suffered some tragedies. Their two girls, the drummer and the singer and guitarist, their dad was their manager. And um, it's really incredible. Like They had a documentary, but I've also watched a lot of interviews the way the girls were treated is really abysmal. Like they had a lot of support from the, you know, their dad and uh, people in the, the music community were really great, but, but music press and fans were just terrible. And the funny thing is like, I watched a documentary on the runaways and it's like the same thing, what the runaways experienced in the seventies, Kitty experienced just around 99, 2000, 2001. They had like, people in the audience trying to put their hands in the girls' clothes. They were often accused of not playing their own music, having guys behind the speakers playing the music for them. And uh, there was one show where a guy went up on stage and punched the singer in the face. And the bass player turned around and clobbered him with the bass. And the I guitar hurt so. him in the ass with the guitar. Yeah. <laughs> but they yeah. have soldiered on. And um, there was a time where they were inactive and then one of their former members actually died of um, related to her depression. And then they just did nothing for about five years. But there's been this resurgence in the new metal scene. And even though they are not new metal, they get lumped in with it. So they were invited to play some shows. A record label said, we want to put out a new Kitty album. And so that one there, it's called Fire, just came out uh, June 21st. And I've been seeing them being interviewed in podcasts all over the place now. So it seems that they're, they're back on the scene. That album was in the top 10 of various lists after the first week of release. So there's an example of a uh, you know, Canadian band that is, is, seems to be doing really well, especially in the U.S. Because all these interviews I've seen have been done by people in the U.S. interviewing them and talking about how they saw them in whatever, New Orleans or California, whatever, during the early 2000s. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad to know that, you know, four ladies from London, Ontario, who are, yeah, and, and their guitarist, who's been with them since 2005, Tara McLeod, she also plays in an all-girls country band called Nice Horse from Alberta. Mm. <laughs> As well, she's mm. played in some, like, alternative pop band and with uh, Jasmine Whitegliss, who is the sister of Alisa Whitegliss, who sings with Arch Enemy in the UK now. Um, so she plays in a variety of different bands playing different styles of music. So I find them, yeah, the documentary, their interviews, I find it really interesting to know their story. And uh, in a way, I almost like their stories better than the music. But I think the new album is really cool, if you like that kind of thing. <laughs> cool. Never, I've never heard of them. And I live yeah. close to London, Ontario, but I've never heard of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, London, Ontario seemed to have... Um, a lot of girls uh, who were into that uh, kind of, you know, a little bit on the extreme metal side and the, the harsh female vocals, there seems to be like a nest of them there in London, Ontario. Hmm. Must cool. be something in the water, huh? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> Curtis, what you got? 
Well, uh, I'm going to take it into the nine. Well, I guess the yeah, nineties, early two thousands, I guess. Uh, uh, staple of Canadian rock radio uh, at the time, I think. Uh, um, I think there's a tradition of Canadian acts with lead singers who have distinctive vocals. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think if you're like your Gord Downies and your uh, well, you just mentioned Brian Adams. Uh, and so this is another one that I think has a distinctive kind of vocal uh, that not everyone likes. But anyway, uh, that'd be Our Lady Peace. I knew you were going to do oh, that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Distinctive vocal, <laughs> I'm like, it's going to show oh, Our yeah, Lady Peace. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't know. I I, I I have a few of the, their albums on CD when they came out. Uh, like I say, they're all over radio and things like that. So I got into them that way. And so I was quite excited when they uh, released this one on vinyl, a compilation of the greatest hits. Um, yeah, and so yeah, I was quite quite happy to pick this up because it took me back to that time and place, you know, in the nineties, two thousand era. Um, yeah, and I think they're I th I still enjoy their music, but it, it, it is that uh, what's his name? Rain is it? Uh, Rain Rain Nada. Yeah. Rain yeah, Nada. That's it. Yeah. Uh, I fall into that camp that can't stand his voice. Yeah, and there's, there's, yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. I like the songs. Like, the songs are good. I, you know, I, I grew up wasting hundreds of hours watching much music back in the 90s. Yeah. And they were all over sure. uh, much music. And the songs are fine. It just his voice, it just, to me, was nails on a chalkboard. But for those who have never heard Our Lady Peace, it's, you know, stereotypical 90s rock i guess is the yeah. best way to describe it that's the way i can come up with to describe it too yeah yep. yeah yeah again i was checking them out a few months back i used to have the clumsy album on cd way way back and i thought i should give them a second chance maybe i should listen to some of their other albums but it was the voice every time yeah <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> rain is still out there touring because his wife is chantelle kraviadzik who is a singer yeah. songwriter in oh, her really? own right who is amazing they've been yeah. doing like double bill tours the two of them uh hitting some of the smaller theater venues so yeah they pass through the theater here as well yep yeah so yeah i just That's picked up one. chantelle's third album a couple of months back and i really like it yeah, great records mm. yeah all right, I'm going to show um, an album from a band from Guelph, Ontario. Mm. This is a band called Royal Castles, which very few people have heard of. This album is called Just the Hits, which is ironic <laughs> because this is their only album. So <laughs> it's not like this is not Greatest Hits. This is this is their only album. This came out uh, in 2021, the height of the pandemic. Um I bought this because I saw the video for the first single, which I think was called, um, I think it was the money song. And I liked it. It is, uh, it's garage rock power pop, which right. um, is, 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 is interesting. It's a trio. It's um, the reason I bought it. AJ Johnson is um, according to this, he plays mostly bass and vocals. They all play all the instruments, but I know AJ personally. Um, he has been the drummer for another band that I love called Cuff the Duke from Toronto. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been a fan of that band forever and ever and ever. And he had another band called Odd Years that I really liked. So I bought this for a couple of reasons, because I know AJ and I'm happy to buy his albums, but also I really dug the single. And this whole record is absolutely fantastic like i said it's garage rock power pop and it's really 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 good and they actually just put out a new single like within the last month so i think that there is a new album on the way this one is very cool it's like pink vinyl but um yeah uh absolutely fun album this copy is autographed and in fact AJ autographed it and delivered it to my house, so which was which was awful. <laughs> nice one. But uh, just if, if you like that sort of garage rock, power pop kind of thing, check out Royal Castles. Royal really Castle. Royal Very Castle. Cool. I've never heard of those guys. Yeah, like I said, it's called Just the Hits, but it's their only album. So you know. Yeah. Okay, I'm not sure how long we're going camp. for. We're on gonna, band we're, camp. We're, 
There you go. That's it. Absolutely. We go. We'll go around the horn one more time. We'll go. Okay, because I want to get my. I got a, a whole bunch of stuff still, oh, but I want to get my favorite band. Do, in, do, so I better do, do that. Do a two wrong. for or a three for if you want. I uh, I'm going with my favorite Canadian band. The one that's on your hat. Lois of the <laughs> Low. <Lord. Yeah. laughs> Just saw them uh, two weeks ago again. They always put on a great freaking show. Ron Hawkins, the singer songwriter, is one of the great songwriters in Canada in, in Canadian music, as far as I'm concerned. This album is on the list of greatest Canadian albums of all time, and it was in, released independently. No, not no major label. Wow. Um, if anybody's interested, they have a documentary in the history of the band. It's on Apple TV. It's called Subversives. Well worth watching. And uh, yeah, it's a great album. If you're interested in just checking out some tracks, a song called Rosie and Gray, which is probably their most famous song. They all everybody always sings along with it at shows and um, bleed a little while tonight. They're stay they're just uh, great. They got this album that's from 1991, actually. Uh, three two albums ago, they released this really good album called Agit Pop. It's a fantastic record. Uh, really a salute to pop music. It's really infectious, excellent, excellent record. And they've got a current new album out called Welcome to the Plunder Dome. So, but if they ever come <laughs> to your town, they're coming to Halifax, actually. Oh, there you go. Check out Lois of the Low in Halifax. They're coming okay. soon. I'll, yeah. I'll check that out. We'll see them. You'll blow you away. Shamefully, I don't have any Lois of the Low, but I do have some of Ron Hawkins and the Do Good Assassins. Oh, Which cool. Another, man. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I should pick up Shakespeare in my butt because I've seen it a few times. So you should. I should. And I know that I would like it. I just yeah. I should do a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Brian. All right. All right. So uh I picked a well, Godspeed you Black Emperor. Wow. Which is a oh wow. You know, I, this is one of my favorite artists artists. This is um their record F sharp, A sharp, Infinity. This is I just I could have pulled them all up, but I didn't. This is Slow Ride for New Zero Canada, which was an EP they put out. They're in the post rock genre, which is this really interesting experimental musical approach that focuses on atmosphere and risk, but also borrows a lot of styles from other music like uh, minimalist classical, jazz, kraut rock, experimental indie, all those things all put together and in these generally very long song structures. And not only that, the band has spawned a number of side projects. There's too many to list, but Silver Mount, Zion, um, Hursta, Exhaust, Set Fire to Flames. I'm going to forget them. There's a ton. A lot of them are on the Constellation record label out of Montreal. And I think this band is really interesting. Now, they are they are known in certain places. And there's other post-rock bands uh, in the States, of course. But uh, I've always found this band to be really interesting. Uh, just the, the sound is very interesting. And the fact that they... They don't write three minute pop songs. It's much longer. You know, one of their one of their albums is a double album, has four tracks, one on each side. It's really interesting. So okay. I've always thought they're very interesting. And just the what they borrow from and what they do, I find fascinating. So if you don't know this band, it's hard to know which record to recommend because there's they're all really interesting. But I've always thought they're very, very uh unique. And I love the sound that they have. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious about them, but I've never dipped a toe in the water. Yeah, me neither. I'm the same. Yeah. Oh, really? I'm a little surprised. I've been hearing them about them for like 25 years now or more. Yeah, I think 97 was their first release, yeah. so it has been a while. Uh, but it shows up in a lot of like uh, progressive rock or other types of conversations. I keep hearing that name mentioned a lot. So. Yeah, it, it also comes up when we talk about psychedelia. Yeah, psychedelia is sometimes <laughs> mentioned with the, this band too, so it's I, I find them interesting. Cool, that's a great choice. All right, Peter. Yeah, well, okay, so um, I just pulled this, this off the shelf now because I realized uh, how, how we're going with the conversation. So um, <laughs> I'll do something different than I had expected. So I grabbed. Um, let's see if I can get the glare off this here. This is Jeff Martin of the Tea Party. Tea Party. Oh, I'm gonna try no. to get his. Uh, oh, I can't get the card out. I want the, the glare off. But uh, so he I left the tea party he around solo. 2006. He wanted to take some time off. He was really disappointed with uh, 
the last album they did seven circles because he felt there was just too much pressure to write an american market targeted album and he just got all stressed out about it and then uh, he talked to what's his name roy harper they were friends and roy harper said come to ireland <laughs> So he moved off to a, a little peninsula of rock in Ireland, and uh, he wrote this album here called The Exile in the Kingdom. And wow. that area that he moved to, the locals called The Kingdom, and he is, I guess, the exile. So this is an album of mostly acoustic tracks, again, featuring a lot of those different instruments that they used on the Tea Party albums. The opening track is the one that is a little bit on the heavy side, but it's got an orchestra. It's got somebody doing a kind of like a Arabian chant type thing in one part, which is kind of cool. And then there's another track on here called The Kingdom, which is this really slow, almost religious feeling type piece with these people, choir of people who just keep doing the same kind of uh, melody chants, almost like a humming in the background which i find is is really nice but um yeah this was his first attempt to do a solo album and i think it's it turned out really really well and after this he I, left I ireland to really... australia because his wife is australian and they had a kid and they thought it's best to be with her family there and that's how he ended up being away from canada permanently but um yeah if you're interested in the tea parties more acoustic based stuff then this is a really neat album to check out so he's the back. In the kingdom. <laughs> he's back, and the Tea Party have reformed, and they're touring right now in Canada. Yeah, I know they're in Canada now. Yeah, they reformed in 2011, 11, 2012. Yeah. But yeah. he's basically stay, staying in Perth, Australia, and releasing EPs of his solo material, which are really expensive to buy overseas. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they are touring in Canada now. I know about that. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Just kind of like Our Lady Peace. They're another one of those bands that was all over much music back in the 90s. You yeah. couldn't watch an hour of much music without seeing one of those two bands for sure. Yeah. 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 And they're still recording great stuff. And every album has a little bit of a different approach to it. So um, you kind of know what you're going to get. But there's some surprises as well every time. I always thought he came off a little bit pretentious, like he was trying to be Jim Morrison. This kind of well, so that's a you good know, point. It was, yeah, I you know, he that. lives in Australia, right? So I asked Ben Rankins, Hey, have you ever heard of Jeff Martin? He said, Yeah, he's a little too serious for me. Yeah, he <laughs> very seriously by all accounts. So <laughs> who knows? Yeah, Curtis, he's actually like, I've seen him um, on his solo shows talking. Yeah. And he's got this really flat, dry sense of humor. So what he says is funny, but the way he says it, he almost can't get a smile on his face. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Uh, well, I'm going to stick close to home here. I'm going to showcase a, a, local, a local group here from the island. Uh, I'm actually going to see them Thursday night. Uh, they got a gig over at the park, so uh, they're a three-piece outfit. Uh, they go by the name of Slow Coaster, uh, mm -hmm. from the Slow Coast, as they like to say here on the East Coast. Uh, <laughs> or so the so the that's, the story goes anyway. Slow Coast, three-piece outfit. Um, they started releasing albums, I think, around 2002, 2004, somewhere around there and released their last album 2013 and you know thought that was the end of them really and then they just released another album at the end of last year uh which was really really good i don't own it uh they put it out on vinyl actually uh, so it's on my top of my list here to, to to purchase i haven't picked it up yet though uh i'm waiting to see them in concert actually to pick up the, pick it up at the concert anyway um but yeah, I find their music just gets better and better and better with every release. And so uh, they're big on the festival scene. And so they're a little jammy, um, kind of, uh, they're fun. They're, they, they, uh, they don't take themselves too seriously. Uh, bit of a reggae backbeat to a lot of their, their, their music. Um, yeah, just, you know, 
Fun time. I didn't catch the name of the band. What was it? Uh, Slow Coaster. Slow Coaster. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, like you can tell they're kind of kind of fun with just the names of their song, right? The Darkest of Disco, BYO Life. Is this stuff working? Uh, Mexican guitar. Actually, Steve, the the the, the, the lead guitarist, uh, he often has a real kind of uh, I would say Mexican kind of guitar kind of style. I don't know. I don't know nothing about music theory and things like that, but but it, it's a uh, it's very interesting. There's a couple of tracks on the new album that really showcase that sort of uh, uh, style of the guitar playing. A new album's called Apples and Oranges. It's really good. Cool. Yeah, I got to check that out. Me too. I'm going to also show something from the East Coast because I love East Coast music. This is only available on CD, and I show it because I hope, hope, I hope, I hope someday <laughs> it comes out on vinyl. Melanie Doan. Oh, yeah. It's This is her album called Adam's Rib from 1998. Again, this is another one of those that uh, saw a lot of airplay on much music, especially the title track, Adam's Rib. Um, and then there was another single, Happy Homemaker. Uh she is, um, you know, uh, radio friendly rock combined with a fiddle because she's a fiddle, oh, yeah. player, mm -hmm. which you wouldn't think works, but it really, really does. This is just an absolutely fantastic album. She has, there were five or six actual hits off of here from back in the day. Um, and she put out about, uh, well, I don't know, half a dozen albums uh, and then kind of retired from music as a recording artist and became a music teacher. She founded a ukulele school, which is what she does. She teaches kids to uh, play ukulele and she has wow. like in school programs where she goes into schools and you know, does music classes and that kind of thing. I guess it's something that her father had done and she sort of carried on with that and then she became a mom. Um, so she's still active musically, but not in terms of putting out new albums. So, I mean, I don't know that this is ever going to see the light of day because, I mean, this is this was put out on Columbia almost 30 years ago. So I would imagine that her contract with Columbia has, you know, long since run its course and uh, i doubt that there's any interest by anyone to reissue this but uh, hmm. i hope so this is just a great again if it's in that same vein as you know tea party and our lady peace you know top 40 much music stuff from 30 years ago i mean that's exactly okay. what that is and it's a it's a hell of a good album so i know cool. the title track but I don't think I know anything else on the album, so I'm 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 gonna have to. And, you, and as soon as you say there's a fiddle in it, you know, like my ears. So, up, right? Okay, so uh, if you're gonna do that, if you're gonna do that, there's a song on here, and she wrote all these songs. There's a song on here. It wasn't a single or anything, but there's a song on here called Mel's Rock Pile, mm -hmm. and it is basically it's a fiddle and an electric guitar, and it's just a jam, and it is awesome. Okay. So if you like fiddle, go look up Mel's Rock Pile by Melanie Doan. You'll you'll Very dig cool. it, Curtis. You absolutely will. Can I've we do one, one more round? Let's do one more round. Sure. It's too much fun. Do one more round. I got to tell you guys, I've got a list of like six or seven artists to check out here. I much appreciate. This is awesome. Me too. Me too. <laughs> um, I don't think you can do a video like this without mentioning this man, Stan Rogers. Incredible singer songwriter, one of Canada's greatest. I've been Book looking at old, on vinyl. My while. favorite Stan Rogers album with uh, Barrett's Privateers on it in 45 years. Uh, the song Fogarty's Cove, just a great record. Uh, great songwriter, died tragically in a fire on a runway in Cincinnati in a, on a plane. And uh, yeah, we lost him way too soon. He's amazing. But uh, yeah, I have to mention Stan Rogers. I already mentioned them if you were paying attention. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't one of his records, so. No, but I mentioned them. I said the Adam oh, Baldwin record, I had to show a record. I mean, you know. is inspired by that. So 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you showed it because it ties into what Curtis showed her. There you go. They, they still do uh, they do a folk festival here every summer in, in his honor. Uh, it's named after him, the Stan Rogers Fiddle and Folk Festival. I'm actually reading a book. I didn't know it was out until a couple of weeks ago. I found it. Uh, Garnet, his brother Garnet wrote a book. The thing's like about a thousand pages. It's so put their whole life story together. It's really, oh, wow. I'm really enjoying it. It's really good. Oh, wow. Okay. What's the name of it? I can't recall. It's sitting upstairs. I can't recall the name of it. But just look up Garnet Rogers. Uh, okay. yeah, you'll see his book. Excellent read. Which is a t shirt I'm wearing. This band, Unleash the Archers, from Victoria, now based in Vancouver, they covered Northwest Passage. And I think it's this, oh. their song on Spotify that has the most plays. Really? <laughs> All right, Brian. All right, so I, this will be the uh, most well-known person I think uh, I've shown so far. And I, I couldn't let it go by without mentioning Bruce Coburn. Yeah, uh, no. this is stealing fire. And I love this hype sticker. It's, it tells you how to pronounce it. <laughs> so don't pronounce the C. It's a CK. Coburn. Uh, and I mean, I read, his, I read his book last year, Rumors of Glory. He's had, uh, I think, something like 34 albums. Now, some of those are, are live recordings. And then there's a bunch of compilations. I have them all. So there's a handful that are not on vinyl. I have those CDs, but I have everything. This is probably his most well-known one from 84 because it has, uh, if I had a rocket launcher, it has Lovers in a Dangerous Time, which was covered by Bare Naked Ladies. But he is still making excellent music. My yes. Probably my favorite from his is 1999's, uh, I think it's 99. Um, uh, God, the Charity of Night. But he put an album out last year, which is also very good. But he has said that, you know, his hands aren't as good as they used to be. He has arthritis, so he can't play some of the songs he used to play. He's, my favorite story about Bruce Coburn was uh, someone asked Eddie Van Halen, you know, what's it like to be the best guitarist in the world? And he said, I don't know. Ask Bruce Coburn. Because I think he's <laughs> that good. I think he's underrated. Yeah. I, you know, he's, he says that the, the folky stuff he did, the jazzy stuff he did, the political commentary that, he, that he's done, the yeah. love songs. I think he's, I think he is, the, well, the best guitarist out of Canada. I think he's one of our strongest lyricists after maybe Leonard Cohen. I think he's really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's one thing about him that I'm not thrilled about and that's he has this sort of um, vein of christianity running through some of his tracks i think some are more overt than others but i kind of let that go because he is really in my opinion uh one of our best musicians and i know he is known outside of canada but i don't think he has the fame that one would expect from such a solid like there's not a bad record everything yeah. he's done is amazing there's only one song i can think of that i'm not 100 percent in love with everything else is fantastic he's always done some interesting instrumentals used to sing a song in French on every record. He stopped that a while ago, but fantastic. Of course, he's in the, he's living in the States now, but um, really interesting guy. I think he needs to be get more more recognition, although he has. He's a member of the Order of Canada, et cetera, et cetera, lots of awards, but I think he's yeah. fantastic. The thing and you, about, and you showed, yeah. Go the ahead. thing about Chris, the Christianity thing is that he's not preachy about it. He's more that's poetic true. about it, which... That's true. That's yeah. So I can live with that. Yeah, I, me uh, too. I, uh, yeah, I'm a huge fan. That's great you brought him up. I was going to, if the show continued, he was next on my list because that's my favorite Bruce Coburn album. Dancing it's pretty Prince. good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. The thing that I don't understand, I show a Blue Rodeo record and I get ridiculed, but Brian shows Bruce Coburn and Leonard Cohen, and that's, you know, no big deal. That, that's as predictable as me showing a Blue Rodeo record. So <laughs> I think we should. Well, the fact is, I, I, but. Rob, I've never done a video on either Leonard Cohen or Bruce Coburn. I've mentioned them, but I've never done a whole video. You've you've done a video on Blue Rodeo, right? I think more than yeah, one. Yeah, more than one. <laughs> yeah, more than one. <laughs> so so Fair that enough. could be the answer. Fair <laughs> enough. All right, but good choice because yes, he's he's one of our best for sure. Yeah, Peter, you got one more for us. Yeah, okay, sure then. So uh, maybe Glenn might know of these guys here. This is the Churls. The who? You know the Charles Glenn? <laughs> no. So What's they were, um, I, I forget where they're from, somewhere in Ontario anyway, maybe the Toronto area. Um, basically a rock, a little bit hard rock band from the late 60s. No. I'd say they sound oh. like Cream and the Rolling Stones. Wow. And in Glenn fact, there's one friendly. song on the album that sounds a lot like Jumpin' Jack Flash. And I actually oh, had to check which was released first because they are really yeah. similar but it looks like jumping jack flash was just 
few months ahead of the Turtles album release. They also have a song which actually includes, just after the guitar solo, they put in the Sunshine of Your Love riff, just in one part before continuing. And uh, what's cool about them was they, they got invited to go down to, I think it was Los Angeles, and record the album. And there's a song on this album called Time Peace. And three years later, two, three years later, the Texas uh, heavy rock band Blood Rock covered that song on their debut album. So I always thought that was really cool that a song by a kind of obscure band from Ontario got covered by a, a Texas band. Wow, I got to check those guys yeah. out. Another one on yeah. the list here. Yeah. So again, if, if you like, like uh, Cream and the Rolling Stones blended together, their first album which I think is just self-titled. Uh, that's what that sounds like. They did a second album. Oh, I haven't got the cover art here, which uh, their their California record label or whatever management wanted them to go into more of a kind of groovy, soulful type rock. So got in an organ player and their sound changed quite a bit. Still a pretty good album, but I think this this debut one here, uh, that that's the, the one to listen to. Wow, very cool. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Curtis. <laughs> You're muted, man. You're muted. Sorry about that. Thanks. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm flipping back and forth here. I don't know. I'm, I think I'm going to go with this one, though. Uh, uh, sticking here. On, well, I guess they're probably not on the East Coast anymore. I think they formed on the East Coast. I'm sure they're based in uh, Toronto now. Uh, but that would be these guys here. The oh, I used to have that. Good yeah. Man. So they're, uh, I'd, I'd say heavy rock, uh, rock anyway, a little on the heavier side, uh, group. Um, yeah, they just, they just, they just rock. And I'm going to see them shortly too, uh, in August, uh, with Adam Baldwin, actually same, not, different nights, same, uh, same event, but different nights. Um, yeah. So this is probably my favorite album followed by. Uh, this one here. Uh, so this is uh, Den of Thieves, and yeah. then followed by No Time for Later. I haven't picked up any of the music they've released in the last couple of years, so I'm uh, quite excited to get to see them live to see what they're sounding like these days. So they yeah. did a live acoustic album too, which is actually pretty good. Yes, I've heard that one. I've streamed that one. Uh, that one was really good. Well, that's who I'll finish with the truth. Awesome. Yeah. Like, yeah, I uh, had that years ago, and I, I went through this period where I thought I gotta get rid of all the CDs I'm not listening to these days, and <laughs> and I just cleared out all this stuff. And now in the last like year or so, oh I used to have that. Oh, I used to have why did I get rid of that? That's one of them. Thought, man, I, I wish I had it now so I could hear it again. Maybe uh, it you know it might strike a chord with me more. And the, the moral of the story, I mean, folks, is don't get rid of records or CDs. Oh, I yeah, know. yeah. I, I'm finding <laughs> I that myself in the ass so many times doing that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> All right, I'm going to round it out because I can't show Blue Rodeo because Glenn will uh, ridicule me. <laughs> no, I love <laughs> Blue Rodeo. You can show. Them. No, no. You, you, are, you already you already made a point about it, so I want to. <laughs> I, He's very sensitive. No, well, uh, you know. Uh, I go. I'll show the next best thing. This one. Here you go. Here you go. Show. There you go. I'm going to show the next best thing: the Sky Diggers. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the Sky Diggers are of the same ilk as Blue Rodeo, sort of the rootsy, uh, you know, uh, uh, whatever you want to call that. Roots alternative rock, country, alternative country, Canadiana, you know, whatever. They're a little, no, they're not a little. They are more acoustic. Blue Rodeo is a little more electric, but it, you know, you know, they come from the same. They're cut from similar cloth, basically. Both from Toronto. Uh, both started in the mid '80s. Uh, this is their uh, debut, self-titled. Um, was finally pressed on vinyl back in 2020. My copy happens to be signed by Andy Mays and Josh Finlayson. The two. Front men, uh, they've gone through several lineups over the years with Andy and Josh being the, the two constants in the band, and they're the, they're the guys writing everything. 
I've seen them countless times. Uh, a good friend of mine from high school has been their drummer for the last uh, almost, uh, oh shit, probably almost 20 years now. So uh, they're just a great uh, sort of roots kind of, you know, whatever. They have uh, probably 20 albums at this point in time and a handful of EPs. So if you like that rootsy sort of, um, you know, folky kind of stuff, I highly recommend the Sky Diggers. And this, I think this is probably their best album of the lot. So, which is that one? The self titled, which oh, I think came yeah, out in like, right. yeah, not, yeah. I have, out uh, like 1987. Yeah, that's a good one. Interesting thing about them the label that they were on initially, um, if I remember the story, the label went bankrupt. So they lost their masters. And so they had to re record some of the original stuff for like their their greatest hits and whatever. So there's some of them, which some of the early albums are never going to see a reissue on vinyl because the masters don't exist anymore. So uh, but, uh, a fun band. Yeah. Okay. So, well guys, uh, we're like an hour and 15 minutes. So we'll, uh, we'll I think we'll call it a, a night here. Thank you guys for joining. This is a lot of fun. I love talking about Canadian music and I've heard about a lot of stuff that I didn't know, which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure we all have taken away lists from this of stuff we want to go check mm -hmm. out. So uh, I thank you all for joining me and uh, I think we'll do another one of these in another month and a half or so if, if, if folks are interested, but it was a pleasure. Uh, Curtis Young LP Lovers, Peter Music is a Journey, Brian from Embryotic Robot, and Glenn Calloway from The Basement. Please visit all of their channels, check out their videos, give them a sub subscription. That would be wonderful. Um, thank you, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much, Rob. Awesome. Thanks. That's great. See everybody next time.